On today's episode, I'm going to take you shopping with me at five different Goodwill locations and show you some of the things that I got and some of the things that I didn't get. And I'm also going to show you how I flipped several of the things that I got, as well as a few things that I have thrifted in the past that I use today with the things that I found. I'm really excited because I haven't gotten to do a thrift and flipped video for you in a long time. So get ready, get set, and here we go. <laughs> Since it is Wednesday, you know that I am starting out the day with the Goodwill bins. And I try not to film people's faces, and I just realized that instead I give you mysterious behinds to look at. <laughs> so next time I'm going to be a little extra careful to maybe only get their feet. <laughs> I know that it's fun watching people go and thrift, and I had to grab a second cart because I swear every time I grab a first cart there at the bins, it's always terrible and doesn't move. But anyway... Next time I film at the bins, I will try and get a better camera angle, and I know you guys want to see exactly how it is there and uh, what it's like to go shopping along with me. So I try my best to kind of give people their privacy, not look like a weirdo that's filming, <laughs> as well as giving you guys enough fun stuff to see. But right off the bat, I ran to the first bin that I could see that had lots of home decor and other random items like that. 90% of all the bins that were there today were clothing and shoes. So I didn't get a whole lot from the bins today. I did get really good things though. So I think that definitely makes up for it. Here's a quick look at all the things that I got. I always try and grab a few books for my kids or family members or for my antique booth to sell. Uh, but I got only a few today. It is 30 degrees out, which is extremely cold for Houston. So of course nobody's ready for that. I'm walking out to the car now and to the next Goodwill. But it was kind of a bust today. I didn't get very much stuff. I spent 28 something and then um, they rounded it up to 29. So today's Goodwill bins was $29, which matches about the temperature outside. <laughs> Funny enough, that's time to load it up. At this next stop, there was a lot of cute stuff, but I feel like the way they priced it, I couldn't get any more than what they had asked for um, in my booth. So I decided to pass on everything and I just picked up this one item. As I was walking out of the store, it was so empty. And when I checked out, I asked the cashier, what's the deal? Why they didn't have a lot of selection? And she said that it's because they haven't had anybody in to put the merchandise out. They had a lot but they didn't have anybody there helping to put out the merchandise. So interesting. The third Goodwill, I had the same experience. It seems like they didn't have a whole lot of stuff out. And I don't know what that, why is that? I don't understand why that's happening recently. 
I know that there is a lot of people donating right now because they got all these new things for Christmas. And also it's like the spring cleaning time of the year. People are decluttering and getting rid of tons of stuff. So I know that the Goodwills have tons of inventory to put out. But it's weird because I feel like at the bins, at the thrift stores, there's no new merchandise out right now. Maybe they're just having a like a staffing crisis or something like that. But I'm having to spread out my trips quite a bit because every time I've gone recently, there hasn't been much of anything new put out. Very weird. Let me know in the comments if you're having the same issue at your local Goodwills. Also, as I'm shopping, let me know which items you would have picked up that I didn't pick up and let me know why. I like finding out what is trending as far as what people like. It also helps me to create really great content for you guys that you're actually enjoying. So please let me know what you're liking, what you're not liking, what you'd like to see more of, all that good stuff. I did find this awesome ginger jar lamp right here and the silhouette of it was gorgeous and Serena and Lily... Um, Pottery Barn and Ballard Designs all tend to have these type of lamps. I think especially Ballard Designs, I believe they actually have one. And of course, when I go to pick it up, the cord is all tangled up under another lamp and I'm filming with one hand trying to do it <laughs> with the other hand. So I look like a weirdo over here in the store <laughs> trying to film this lamp. And I, I'm pretty sure that's Strawberry Shortcake. If I'm wrong, let me know. But my grandma had a doll made out of a Coke bottle and paper mache that was strawberry uh, shortcake and it looked exactly like her. So I think that was her. And I'm looking right here for the lampshade that went with it or at least a lampshade that can go with it. I did find some neat lampshades. I liked these blue ones. They would look really pretty on the candlestick shaped lamps. And then I really liked this green one right here and it was actually a really good price. But I don't have any lamps that small right now. And with it being more spring, summertime right now, I didn't want to get anything that looked kind of Christmassy. And that looked a little Christmassy to me. The rest of them had quite a bit of damage, so I didn't pick those up. But one good place to always check for lampshades, especially lampshades you plan to make over, like you're just looking for some bones to a lampshade, is definitely Goodwill. I used to be upset that they separated the lamps from the lampshade and sold them separately. But now it's kind of nice to be able to buy a lampshade when you don't need to buy a lamp and vice versa. The pictures here at this thrift store did not have anything interesting to me. I did see this out of the corner of my eye right here and thought it might be Valentine's Day, but it was Christmas. And I'm not really purchasing for Christmas right now unless it's something that I just can't say no to. I thought this was really cute as well. But I did get a few things here and it was a really cheap day for me, I guess. <laughs> I did not spend a whole lot of money and... I'm moving on to the next Goodwill store and this Goodwill was way overpriced in my opinion. So let me know what you think of these prices. I feel like for some reason this location was way more expensive than the others. Although I did like this and that's a good deal for it if you were buying it off like Facebook Marketplace or if you weren't intending to resell. But I have no place for that in my home and I would be buying for resale so it was too expensive. Another thing that I noticed at this location was that there was a lot of stuff that wasn't priced. So I don't know. Maybe they really are having a staffing crisis here where they just don't have enough people working or they can't hire enough people for whatever reason. I don't know. But it just seemed kind of weird. This is usually one of the better Goodwills that I get more stuff from. But lately it has been a miss for sure. All we walked out with was this <laughs> flower right here. And it was pretty much garbage that fell off of something else. So... I mean, I'm not complaining. We have a nice little flower. I like this basket here. It was really good quality, but it was $4.99 already. There's really not much more that I could ask for in my booth, but I do want to point out that it's good to buy those more chunky type of baskets because they're in good shape and really strong. This one I thought was really interesting. The price was not bad, and it was from Cracker Barrel, actually. That surprised me, but this would be pretty for Valentine's Day. I just have too much Valentine's stuff, so I can't really buy any more of that. I also thought that this frame was really pretty. I don't necessarily love the art in it and the rest of the art I didn't have any interest in. Is I think the real feel temperature today is 14 degrees and I'm freezing. We are not built like this here in the south so I'm gonna <laughs> go a little fast on showing you this haul. But I got, even though I got like a small amount of stuff, one of the things that I got was extreme. 
Not only am I going to show you everything that I got, but I'm also going to flip some of these items today. Since I didn't have a huge haul to share with you, I want to make sure that you guys have something fun to watch. So I'm actually going to flip some of these today as well. These little decor greenery balls um, have like little fake fruit on them. I don't know what else you'd call those. But I'm going to try and turn these into topiaries using some thrifted containers that I had bought in the past. Next, I have this bowed plate, which is brand new in the box. I made sure to check while I was in the store that it was in there and that it wasn't broken. Glass stuff at the Goodwill bins is always broken unless it's in its box. Oh, oh. upside down. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. Perfect. I love the little candy cane stripe edge on there. But this is going to get put away in storage until next year for Christmas. And I will probably sell this one in the booth at that time or I might actually keep that one for my dining hutch. As if it wasn't bad enough that it's really cold, now it's windy. So I also got this little cute thing that is from World Market. It was originally $12.99, <coughs> but I got it at the bins. And everything that I got cost me $29, with including me rounding it up. So this is another basket that I got from the bins that needs to be cleaned, but it's in really good shape and I love the thick texture. These rusty metal bins I got from the bins. And they are different sizes. These two are the same, but there's another bigger size and I got three of these total. I'll show you the other one right now. Currently, I feel like my fingers are gonna break off because of how cold it is, but <laughs> it's worth it to show you guys what I got. But aren't they cool? I got a like new cheese grater. I only have a really tiny cheese grater right now, so I needed one of these. And I love that it has the rubber on the base because then when you're grating, it doesn't slide all over the place. Great place to find kitchen items at the bins. All right, this beautiful lamp was sitting on the shelf like this and it was $4.99. And then when I turned it around, I was like, oh. <laughs> but it doesn't have that bad of a texture to this. So I think I can, I can redo this and make it look really beautiful as a ginger jar lamp with a pretty shade. Should have worn gloves, I should have worn gloves. Okay, next is this basket right here. I love that it has this little dip in the front and it's in perfect condition. And then I also got this basket, which has a cool paint finish to it. It was blue, then they painted it white. And I feel like if I sand it a little more, get the blue out, it'll look even cuter. This is the shocking find that I found. It was $8.99, but the price underneath, $316. So I'm gonna clean this off. I think I'm just gonna actually blow on it with a blow dryer or my leaf blower and then touch up the paint around it. Isn't that amazing? It's really heavy too. Okay, this right here I got from the bins and I asked for a separate price for it because it was pretty heavy. So they gave it to me for $5 and it has cute hooks on the bottom. I love it how it is, but I'm, I'm still debating whether I'm gonna actually keep it and paint it and use it in my daughter's bathroom. All right. I'm going to keep going. This little cute sign I got for $2.99. These tulips I pulled out of another arrangement at the bins and bought them on their own. And I think these would look great in any container. They got some rust on them because I had them inside that rusty um, little container that I bought. But hopefully I can clean that off. This book is a don't laugh challenge book. My daughters love doing those, so I got that for them. All the books at the bins are 50 cents a piece if you buy two or more. Next, I got this antique book from the 1920s. And I got a quilting book to sell in my booth. And then I got this for my son, which is a dinosaur encyclopedia. I think he's really gonna like that. But that's it, so let's go inside, I can't wait. <laughs> The first project that I'm going to start flipping is this lamp because it's my favorite thing I got from all of this haul. I am obsessed with ginger jars. I have a, an abundance of them in my house. I have other ginger jar lamps that I've bought full price before, but I've been finding them thrifted lately and I want to share with you that you can redo them in a really beautiful textured finish for super cheap. I'm putting Slick Stick from Dixie Belle on here as a primer because it is a really shiny finish. If you don't have that or if you have a really tight budget, you can skip that and go straight to doing this. Just 
you may have a little chipping after many years of use. <laughs> if that doesn't bother you, no big deal. But it's baking soda. I did a handful and I'm using a paint sample in the color Celery by Sherwin-Williams, which was something that I had bought for a different project that I did a long time ago. And I'm trying to use up all of my paints lately, so I thought this would be really pretty on a ginger jar, a fresh green color. The camera, of course, isn't picking up the actual intensity of the color. It looks fairly white in the camera right now, but in person it does look like a very beautiful light celery green color. And it's a bit of like a, maybe a seafoam green, if I had to, to give you a description of it. It's beautiful and it's very fresh and spring looking and I think that it's going to look really great with the lampshade that I got for it. I actually did not buy this lampshade thinking about this lamp but what I do is I buy lampshades when I find them on clearance. The best place to buy lampshades is the at home store. The store is actually called at home which is confusing to type and say because people are like at home what? So <laughs> it's called the at home store. The name is just quote unquote at home. I'm taking off this harp that is on here because the lampshade that I have is the kind that goes underneath a light bulb. So I don't need the harp anymore, but I will keep it for future lamps in case I need to. But it was $12.99, 50% off, and it is a really beautiful textured lampshade that I think is going to look beachy and pretty along with that seafoam green that I picked for it. Although you could have done any color with this lampshade and then... I had just finally tested it at this point while I had already painted it and done all that work. I'll show you that one at the very end of these next few projects because they're all together in the after. But right here, I am just washing a lot of fake florals that I've had for a long time sitting in my garage or outside even. So they were really dirty and had been rained on and what have you. So I'm cleaning it up with a little bit of bleach and then I'm going to use this little brush on a stick you could use a broom you could use whatever you want to use um, but I'm just cleaning them up really good and I let them sit in that bleach water for a few hours and then came back and rinsed them with the tub faucet so they were really squeaky clean if you want to wash your fake flowers at home this is a really good method as well once they were dry I put them into that chunky basket that you saw that I thrifted and then look at how great it looks paired with the lamp. It's like the flowers match the green of the lamp and the lampshade matches the color of the basket. They were made for each other. <laughs> Who would have known? I sure didn't. These are some of those projects that I feel like I really want to keep because they turned out so pretty. And they look really good with my clock on the wall that was hanging nearby. So then I just had to stage it with the clock because, you know, it looked really beautiful. And this kind of gives me a cottage themed decor style. The chalkboard cleaned up really well. I just used a Lysol wipe to clean that up. And look at how good it all looks together. And I didn't plan this. I wasn't looking for any of this. It just kind of all came together for me on its own. Look at how pretty that beautiful ambiance it has. The texture that that baking soda gives your paint. Oh my goodness, it looks like stone. It's gorgeous. The lamp seems so high end now. The florals look brand new. And that little chalkboard, I can write whatever messages I want to for any holiday or season or what have you. But I probably am going to sell these pieces in my booth. Next, I have that shelf that I had that was huge and green and I wanted to use for my daughter's bathroom. Well, I decided I do want to use it for her bathroom. So I'm going to paint it in this video, but I didn't get a chance to hang it up yet. But the paint that I'm using is Dixie Belle's um, color cotton, I believe. It's just white paint. If you have white paint, use white paint. <laughs> I don't really worry about what brands or anything like that. I just use what I think works best or whatever I have on hand. And today my little dog Nino decided to hang out with me. I didn't even realize that the entire time I was painting, he was there with me. He's so tiny, it's kind of easy to miss him when he's around. You can't really tell he's there sometimes. He's like a whisper. <laughs> but he is almost 14 years old now. He still acts like a puppy, though. I keep telling everybody, I think he's definitely going to live to at least 20. And he's about the same age as my oldest child, so they're kind of growing up together. And I think that's going to be really funny if they both get to celebrate like they're 18th birthday and their 21st birthday together. I think that would be really sweet to have pictures of them together. And I, I really do think he'll make it that long because he's extremely healthy and full of spunk. You would never guess that he's about to be 14 years old.
in next week's video, I will get to show you where I hung that up. But now it's time to move on to the next two projects. I had these two cans from some thrift hauls that I had done before, and I think they'd make perfect topiary pots for those green balls that I have. You just need to have a dowel, some foam, and some brown paint in order to create that topiary. The first thing we have to do is cut these dowels down to the right size for how tall I want my topiaries to be. I like it to go about halfway into the ball of the topiary. And I just break them, honestly. <laughs> They're easy to break, so you don't even have to use a tool. I'm using the brown paint to do a paint wash effect on here to make it look like stained wood. But I like that gray tone that this brown has because it looks a little more neutral a little more updated and I think that it would look really pretty with everything else that I'm doing here. And the foam I actually got from yard sales and thrift stores. I always try and find my foam second hand, hand second hand, <laughs> second hand because it's way cheaper that way. Foam can be expensive. And I'm just using a butter knife to cut it. You don't need anything special. Crafting is for everybody and you can do crafts with whatever you have. And I love to be somebody on YouTube here that will tell you that you can do really cool stuff with what you already have. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You can be on a super tight budget and use what you have and make it work. You could do a lot of other things if you don't have foam as well. I have seen people use like trash bags and other things to um, fill in pots for floral arrangements. Just use what you've got and make what you have pretty. But right now I'm using this secondhand foam and then I'm going to stick the stick in there. But first I'm going to put some hot glue so that way it's going to be nice and strong. Since it's a topiary, I know I'm going to end up picking it up by this stick all the time when I go to move it. So if I do go to sell it, I know whoever buys it is going to pick it up by that stick. So I want to make sure it's nice and strong. I'm using some wire cutters here to cut a piece off of here. That way I have a spot where that stick can go up inside that foam ball for my topiary effect. Once that's done, I'm going to use some forest moss that I got from Walmart, I believe, and I'm going to hot glue it in there to conceal where the foam is, and then I'll repeat the same exact thing for the other topiary. I felt like this needed a little bit more to it so I went through my ribbons and picked out one that I thought would look really nice with it and then I glued it on with some hot glue. The next piece I'm going to work on is this little box that was from World Market and these pretty tulips. All I need to do is trim them and create a beautiful arrangement in here and this becomes a nice spring arrangement that's also functional to hold your mail.
These had to have been some of the easiest thrift flips I have ever done, and I adore them. They're, they're so cute. They have a lot of whimsy to them. The bright spring colors are cheering me up during this really cold time, and I think that creating greenery and beautiful little spaces and vignettes in your home is a fun way to bring life into your home. It also brings that cottage charm and the piece of furniture that these are sitting on is all beat up and everything in my home has a little bit of age to it. And it's a little bit worn and adding whimsical things like this as well just makes everything seem like it was meant to be that way. I like thinking that I'm like a hobbit in Lord of the Rings and I have all my cute little hobbit cottagey things. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only person who thinks that way or like I'm in England somewhere in a cute little cottage. <laughs> For the next item, I just need to clean off this bowl of moss with using my leaf blower. If I had to say where this belongs, I would say it definitely belongs on a coffee table, but my toddler will rip this thing to shreds, I guarantee it, if it's at her height on a coffee table. So I put it on our dining table and I think it looks really beautiful. It also goes really well with the china that I put above my dining area right here, which is some of my grandmother's china and some of my own that I have thrifted. And this barley twist table is a table that we recently redid and I don't have a video of it, but I do have some pictures I think of what we started with because it was rough so I'll have to share that in the future when we do our dining room makeover video which um, I'm not sure when that will be but probably sometime soon. Now that we finished all the projects it's time for some bloopers you really loved it on the last episode. Oh my gosh my hands are so cold. <laughs> oh my gosh my fingers. Should have worn gloves. Should have worn gloves. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my hands are going to fall off. Oh gosh, let me just knock my camera over. Oh my gosh, my fingers are going to fall off. How do people live like this? <laughs> my fingers hurt so bad. What? What is this? Oh, they burn so bad. I feel like that time that I was in Missouri in the military and it was negative 12. And it's only 14 here, positive 14. Why? How do you guys do this? Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, so I will see you next time. Bye!